Yes, sir. How do you see the new Secretary of Education that's coming in, and how will we be as far as supporting Okay, how do I see the new Secretary of Education influencing um, these issues? Arnie Duncan, the new Secretary of Education, has been the uh, superintendent of schools in Chicago for the last, uh, I don't know, six, seven years. He has taken Chicago from having zero autonomously managed schools to having one-third of its schools autonomously managed. He has embraced charter schools, whereas the typical superintendent sees charter schools as the enemy. Arne Duncan took the view that charter schools were just another offering of the Chicago public schools. And he has included them in all of the planning, training, and other activities. And he's also taken the view that uh, his principals can learn from charter school principals how to really run your own school. But Illinois has a very restrictive charter schools law that permits the sh city of Chicago only 20 or 30 charter schools. They hit that ceiling several years ago. So what Duncan started doing was creating contract schools which are not prohibited, which are not under state supervision, and contract schools are identical to charter schools except they're not chartered by the state of Illinois, they're contracted by the Chicago Public School District. So his posture has been very aggressively oriented towards increasing the number and clearly, although he hasn't said so, aiming towards turning all of the Chicago Public Schools into autonomously managed schools a la New York City. Now the big question is, you know, uh, the unions were very central to President Obama's election. Will the Obama administration be willing to let the Secretary of Education take a position that is likely to be opposed by the teachers' unions? Any other questions? Yes. So what's the total annual cost? Um, you know, well, all I can tell you is, it, if you, are you asking whether it co how much more does it cost per student or per district to run a decentralized system? Okay, it's less. It's, uh, and as a measure of how much less, another thing that Joel Klein did was he said, I have to permanently reorient the central office away from having power over the principals and telling them what they can and cannot do. Okay, So he took about half of the staffs of the central offices in New York City, which were tens of thousands of people, and he set up 11 independent educational service providing organizations. Roughly half of them are run by ex outside nonprofit 501c3s that have been working with the city for years. And the other half, he picked the very best executives within the New York City central office system and put them in charge of their own service provider. And with the money he saved by doing that, he gave the principals an extra $250,000 a year each. And he said, you pick out of these 11 the people you want to provide you with central office services and they will each define an offering and a price and at the and you have to contract with them for two years but if you don't like them at the end of two years fire them and pick somebody else so he did that and the biggest one is run by Eric Nadelstern Eric Nadelstern is one of the most creative executives in school ed education I've ever seen. E Eric is the man who who created the first 28, then the 40, uh, 29, then the 48, then the 322. And now 522 principals have chosen to be part of Eric's organization. He runs, you know, more than a third of New York City schools. 
He charges them something like $15,000 a year each to provide service. The most expensive of the providers was going to charge $150,000 a year. So Eric's principals each get $250,000 a year extra. They pay him $15,000 to provide service. They've saved $235,000 per school. That's a measure of the kind of efficiency that has resulted. One more question. Yes. Hi, when uh, Seattle did weighted student formula, uh, every teacher was priced the same, so they didn't actually yeah. do actual budgeting. Doesn't that undermine the whole point of weighted student formula? Because okay. uh, you still allow the expensive teachers to migrate to the Okay, so this is a really good point. I, I, a really crucial detail is you use weighted student formula to get the money to the school. And then the central, you don't actually let them have their own bank account. The central office then cross-charges them for everything they use. And about 95% of what a school uses is labor, mostly teachers. Now, there are two ways you can charge a school for labor. You can either charge them the actual salary of the people who work there, or you can use the average of all teachers, the average of all custodians, and so on. Of these eight districts, only two use actual salaries, New York and Oakland. All the others are charging average salaries, which continues a large part, not all, but a large part of the inequity that existed before. Because the poor school that has only rookie or primarily rookie teachers may have an average actual teacher cost of, let's say, $38,000 a year, but the average for the district is 46000 a year, and that's what they get charged, 46000 per teacher. And the wealthy area school, where all the long-serving, highly experienced teachers have migrated, may have an average actual teacher cost of 80000 a year, but they also get charged only forty six. So I had a long conversation with Chancellor Klein on this subject, and I said, he was debating which way to go. I said, well, Joel, you can go for half a loaf, and you will encounter, I predict, virtually no opposition from anyone. You can go for the full loaf, charging actual salaries, and they're going to beat the heck out of you in the Upper East Side, in the Upper West Side, on Staten Island, and every place there's a sizable middle class that's politically motivated. And Joel Klein, which uh, just endeared him to me, looked at me and he said, now Bill, why do you think I took this job? And he went for the whole enchilada. And he got it. And Randy Ward did it, but Randy Ward got lucky. They had a parcel tax that had not yet been spo spoken for. A three-year parcel tax had just been passed in Oakland. So he took that money and used it as hold harmless money. And he said to the, the wealthy schools in the hills of Oakland, I'm going to give you 2500 extra per student because of your payroll that is heavy with long-serving teachers, but you have three years as those teachers retire to get your payroll down. That means you can't replace them with another long-serving teacher. You're going to have to hire a less expensive teacher and actually help that teacher to develop. In other words, do your job as a principal. And what happened was people in Oakland were so happy with this system that when the parcel tax came up for renewal, they voted to make it permanent. But nonetheless, Randy Ward was very clear when he told everybody in the district, this is an NBA-style salary cap. That's all there is to it. And you principals have to get your payroll within your salary cap Period. And that does address the inequities. That's great. Thank you all. Very much.